Fellas, close those doors there. Knock that glare out so I can see a little bit. Well, good afternoon. I'm glad you're here. And on behalf of Miss Alice's family, I want to say thank you for being here. Her husband Henry and her other family members are so appreciative of your prayers and your support. And uh, I've been her pastor now for quite a while. I don't remember how many years I. Didn't sit down and figure it up, but it's been a good many, many, many years when she first came here. But I'll say more about that right now. Let's go ahead and pray, and then we'll have our first congregational song, okay? Let's bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, we sure need you. We seek your help. We seek your comfort, your strength. And I know, Lord, you'll meet the need of every heart here today. Lord, if my heart's heavy, and I know the heart of her husband and her children and grandchildren are heavy too, and her family members are heavy too. Well, I'm glad, dear Father, you're able to help those troubled hearts and comfort them as only you can. And I pray, Lord, as we honor this lady and glorify you, that your will be done. Save the lost who may be here. Encourage the Christian. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, the songs you're going to hear today, two, two congregational songs, the two special songs were picked out by Miss Alice. As a matter of fact, she had a bunch of songs picked out. And I told her back, back, at, back when she picked out, I said, Miss Alice, we cannot beat her all day. I mean, she had them. She just had one after another, after another, and so I think Henry pinned it down. She gave gave you know two two top two one, top five whatever. And went, and that's what we're going to do. And the first one we're going to sing is uh, what page is that, Brian? Ninety one. Number ninety one. Uh, and and so take your songbooks right there close to you. And if you possibly can, we, we, if you can't stand, we're all going to stand and sing this song, okay? And so, brother Brian, you come and lead the congregation.
What a day that will be. And I'm looking forward to that day. She is, uh, that, that song we just sang is now reality to her. And uh, we can rejoice in that. And, uh, and so when I think about this next song, and the two specials that she picked out go back a long, long way. She was a, uh, what you call a, she just goes back a long way. She said one time, she's a preacher baker. I think I'm an antique. Well, then somebody had another old person tell me that one time, and he looked up what the antique means. It means something of great value, something cherished. Amen. So I told her that. She said, well, I feel good now. <laughs> and, uh, and so this song goes way back, and Mrs. Breaker is going to sing this song. Uh, so listen very carefully as she sings. I sure hope you listen to the words of that song. And uh, oh, what a great message in it. Huh? Uh, we're going to take this time right now. I want to share some things with you, some little testimony. Before I do that, I want to say, uh, how proud I am to Henry. He, uh, he married Miss Alice. I think five years ago, and uh, they were, they met back in high school, and, <clears throat> and of course, Miss Alice met another guy, they was married to him a hundred years, it seemed like, <laughs> and, uh, and then Brother Howard went to heaven, and Henry moved back and found out she was a widow, and they began to date. I remember when they, he first showed up here, I said, who was that guy? I didn't like him. <laughs> Why, he's Miss Alice. But anyway, turned about to be a great guy. And they got to, got to talk, and I didn't know. They went back to high school days. And, uh, and uh, he asked her to marry him. She come to me. She said, what do you think, preacher? And we talked. Uh, do you, preacher, do you, do you think we need counseling? I said, <laughs> I don't know. And Henry said, Preacher, we ain't got much time left. <laughs> and I said, well, I think you better know what you're doing. And so they, they got married. And within a year, Miss Alice's health began to, she, did, did, you know, she just needed some attention. Along the way, uh, a little more, a little more, a little more. And uh, she was singing in the choir. She was a great voice in the choir. And she'd sing specials here. And uh, two of those songs you just, I mean, that song she just sang, another one here, she sang them uh, all the time. And uh, so they, they got married. And, and so uh, he made his marriage vows. He wouldn't leave them when she got ill. 
I want to say you've inspired me, Henry. Amen. You've helped me. And I want to say thank you to her family. You have been such a blessing. As I would visit, Miss Baker would visit, you'd be there looking after her, taking care of her, assisting Henry or Henry assisting you. Sometimes they'd have to send Henry off just to get him out of the way and then send him to town to get stuff. And they were there with her day in and day out, looking after her and taking care of her. There's not many families do that today. And I want to commend you for that. You've been such a blessing. And, uh, uh, and it's, it stands out too. It impressed me and my wife and our church family. And so... Uh, then I got to thinking about Miss Alice herself. <laughs> what a character. And uh, you, you get her laughing, you couldn't get her to stop. But she didn't want to laugh out loud. And, uh, and so one time I asked her, why don't you want to laugh out, out loud? She said, I don't want to lose my dentures. <laughs> I said, I didn't know you had any. She said, and she may not have, I didn't know. I was, but one time, I told this to the family a while ago. This happened, I don't know how far back it happened. But I came in, and uh, she stopped me. She said, Preacher, you got, a, you got a piece of lint on your pants. I tried to get it off, pick it off. And she said, you missed it. You missed it. I said, well, won't you pick it off? And I said, and don't be messing with my leg. Said, Preacher, I'm not going to mess. I said, well, get it off. So she reached out, she got it, and I said, Miss Alice, what did you do? She said, I didn't do nothing, Preacher. I didn't do nothing. I said, I believe you did. She said, I did. Please don't tell on me. I said, I ain't going to. I said, no, you didn't. You, 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 got, you got the land off. You did a good job, and I appreciate that. And, uh, oh, we've we had some laughs, and uh, she, loved, she loved to fish. You know that? She loved to fish. And uh, when nobody else could catch them, she could. She could. The last time I went fishing with, with uh, Brother Howard, we got, to the, we got to the river. Storm came through, and we canceled our trip. We got back. And we both were soaking wet from the storm we got in. And we uh, came in and we just, just drenched, you know, hadn't dried off at all. And she said, she said, I told you, Howard, don't to take the preacher, it's going to rain. <laughs> Give us some fish out of the freezer. And uh, I like it already frozen, amen. So uh, anyway, uh, she sang in our church choir. Uh, she, we was one of our ladies, ladies uh, committees. We have three or four committees in our church. Ladies who do different things. She was always a part of that. And uh, I remember in in uh, dating Henry, she would when they started dating. She said, "Now Henry, the church I go to is 45 minutes from here, and uh, and and I don't plan on quitting church. And if we're going to get serious, you're going to have to go to church with me." Well, I didn't know that at the time. And so when, they were, when I was trying to counsel with him, I said, well, Miss Alice, he may want to go to church somewhere. And if he's going to be your husband, you're going to have to follow him. She said, he'll follow me straight to here. <laughs> She's rebelling already. <laughs> and, uh, but as God would have it, Henry got saved here and became a, member, a faithful, faithful member. And I, I, I honestly... Uh, 45 minutes away and they'd get here early and seldom missed anything here. Anything we had going on. A work day, uh, revivals, anything, camp meeting, anything. They were active in Sunday. She'd come for choir practice, which is at 5 o'clock. And, and they just fell in love with the church. And, and, uh, and so uh, what a lady of, of just great, great... Uh, discernment and uh, we'd ask for testimonies and she'd raise her hand and was well, not very lengthy and not very loud either you know I want to thank the Lord for saving me thank the Lord for the church and all God's people here and uh, y'all pray for us we almost hit a deer coming here and uh, so uh, oh what memories I can see her sitting there right there that's right there I can I, four rows back Henry says <laughs> And y'all went Alice to see. You need to get up. <laughs> and, uh, and he hadn't been able to come to church in quite a while. 
And uh, one of the family members brought a tablet and was able to watch it on live stream. He says, who's sitting in my seat now, preacher? I said, I don't know. He said, well, I said, you might have to find another seat. He said, okay. And uh, oh my, I could go on, but I'll not do that. And I told the family, uh, don't let her memories, uh, your memories of her die. If they do, she dies. The only way that she'll stay dead is if your memories cease. Share those memories. Talk about it. And you ought to do that with all your family and friends. And uh, don't forget that, okay? And she loved the Lord. Now, <clears throat> she mentioned this to me. She said, give me no name. She said, preacher, in all likelihood, there will be people at, at my funeral. I want you to preach the gospel. I want you to give an invitation. Because I've got family and friends who are not yet saved. She didn't say who. She didn't say how many. And so if you're here today, the greatest desire of this lady is for you to be saved if you're not saved. And if you are saved, oh, listen, try to follow her example. She, was a, she wasn't a good lady. She's a godly lady a godly lady and she'd be a good pattern for you to follow in your love for God. Amen. So I hope you do that. I'm going to miss her. Miss her already. All right. And, uh, all right. This next song, another congregational song. She picked this out. And so, uh, brother Brian, you come and lead us in that, in that again. All right, let's stand once again. Turn to page number 56. Page number 56, we'll sing the first, second, and last, the old rugged cross. Amen. That's a favorite of a lot of folks. She really loved that song. 
and I love it myself. Well, here's another song she picked out, and it goes back a long time ago, and uh, one of our men in the church is going to sing it. It's entitled, I Want to Stroll Over Heaven With You. Got a blessing. Thank you, Brother Tommy. And uh, uh, Tommy did a great job on that. But I I can remember, uh, and Miss Alice would sing that song with her husband, and some of the ladies in the church would sing it sometimes. And uh, you hear the words of that song, and my goodness, you think about the reality of it. And before I get into my message, uh, I want to say to you that Miss Alice is not here. She is not here. Just her body is here. She, the Bible says, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's just for saved people. Can you say amen to that? Amen. She is enjoying all the beauty and splendor of heaven right now. She's with the Lord Jesus Christ. She has joined that great crowd of witnesses uh, that we, uh, we read about in the book of Hebrews in chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And, uh, and so uh, her days uh, on this life, on this earth are over. And uh, she is at, uh, at, at the place that uh, you and I are going to go one day if we're saved. I want to bring just a, a portion of a verse of Scripture. You know this portion of Scripture out of uh, the 23rd Psalm. And uh, when, I, when I look at this verse of Scripture, and it says here, <clears throat> Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Now watch this statement. For thou art with me. And so just a few days ago, she, she passed through that valley of the shadow of death. And uh, I wasn't there in that early morning hours when she 
uh, God sent for her and escorted her to glory, but she went through that valley. But before I really get to talking about that valley, let me give you some other valleys or some other places she had to cross. And I titled this message today in her honor and her memory at the crossing, at the crossing. When I think about these crossings in her life, portions of scripture come to me and I think about the uh, crossing of the Red Sea for the people of God who'd been uh, set free from the bondage of Egypt. And that crossing of the Red Sea is a picture of salvation. There came a time in Miss Alice's life to where uh, she came face to face with reality, with her, her life and her sin, and she believed upon the Lord Jesus Christ and got gloriously saved. Uh, I was able to sit down with her many years ago. She shared with me her testimony. I thought, boy, what a testimony. And uh, this was a picture of salvation. How did she get saved? Well, when you look at, the, at the, what God did there in Egypt, you know the, the plagues that came. It got to the very last plague when this would be a plague to where the firstborn of all of Egypt would die unless the blood of the lamb was applied to the door lintel. The firstborn of that family would die. The only way they would not die would be for the blood of, of that lamb would be, would be uh, uh, on the sides and the top of the doors and the death angel would pass through. And that's a picture of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the reason that Alice was able to get saved was because of the, the blood of Jesus Christ applied to her debt, her sin, and it washed it all away. And then when they got, when they got to the Red Sea, and of course, uh, Pharaoh's chariots are behind them and uh, mountains on one side and the desert on the other side, the Red Sea ahead of them. You see, they'd been, they, they were just outside of Egypt, not crossed over yet, and they feared for their life. But little did they know what God was going to do for them that night or that, yeah, that night as he miraculously sent a, a, an east wind and, uh, uh, and that wind opened up the Red Sea and they went across on dry ground. And as Pharaoh and his chariots followed them, God closed up the Red Sea and wiped the whole army out. Egypt laid it waste. Now here's the thought. Egypt is a type of the world and the world is, is, is a type of sin that, that would have, held them bondage there. They were in bondage. There was no way. In other words, in Egypt, all they faced was darkness and death. That's all they faced. Do you realize this, this uh, afternoon that if you're not saved, that's where you are? You're living a life of darkness and death. You're going to die one day. And if you don't come to the light and you die in that darkness, you'll spend eternity not in heaven but in an awful place called hell. So the, her first crossing was when the day she got saved. She went from death to life. She went from darkness to light. Oh, I'm telling you, this, this, when, the night I got saved, the same thing happened to me. So if you're ever going to enter into heaven, you got you to gotta cross over. Now, you can't do it by yourself. Amen. It's an act of God. It's a work of God. It's God's salvation. And so here this afternoon, I want to tell to you, the same Spirit of God that spoke to her and spoke to me and many of you, the Holy Spirit, and, and convicted her of her sins and pointed her to Jesus and gave her the faith to believe upon Jesus, that same Spirit is here today. I want to say to you, you will not go to heaven because you're her relative. You must be born again. And so she, uh, and she was like me. She said, Brother Baker, she, she always called me Preacher Baker and Brother Baker. Brother Baker, she said, when I first got saved, I didn't know, I didn't know what, what all involved until after I got saved. And I realized, you know, I'm saved forever. All my sins are gone. I said, all, they're all gone. And she rejoiced in that. So she crossed over and, and from the land of death and darkness to the land of light and brightness. And that's the land of salvation. Then wasn't long they faced another crossing. And that was the Jordan. The Jordan River. They got there. When I think about that crossing there in Joshua chapter 3, verses 7 through 13. And this would be the spirit-filled living life. They get to the Jordan River. And it's in, it's in flood. It, the river's flooding. It's out of its banks, you might say. And they're headed to the land of promise. 
the land of abundance, the land that God has prepared for them, was going to get, would give them. And this is a life of faith. And so here's what God said to him. He said, listen, you get the, you, you get the leaders of the 12 tribes and, and, uh, and they're saying, well, the, the river is overflowing. What are we going to do? He said, as you, as you go forward, the water will split up. The water will open up for you. And so as they stepped out by faith and crossed over the Jordan River to the land of promise, that's what Miss Alice did. She began to live by faith, a life of by faith. What does that mean, live by faith? That means you live your life according to the will of God. You live your life in trusting him to get you from day one to day two, from place to place. And talking with her over the years and, and visiting with her and getting to know her, she was a woman who lived by faith. Her faith was in the Lord Jesus Christ. She tried to be a good example to people. Uh, and even though I, I never saw her, what you might say, down spiritually, I saw her down physically many times, but she always had a good spirit about her. And so she crossed that thing and began to live by faith. And I asked her one time, I said, uh, when you and uh, Brother Howard first got married, uh, I said, how was it? He said, she said, it was tough. It's tough. I said, how, why was that? She said, because he was tough. I don't know what she meant by that. And, and she talked on, he said, but you know what, preacher? She said, when he got saved, when I got saved, our life got better. And we began to live by faith. As we began to live by faith, God began to bless us and prosper us. Amen? Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Are you saved? Have you crossed over that, uh, that river of salvation, entered, in, entered uh, the life of salvation? And then are you living by faith? The Bible says, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. God, God only honors faith. If you want to please God, do it by faith. And she pleased her God by living by faith. By trying her best to be a good example. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't know if she told me the truth about this, and I'll have to ask Henry. And I said, if you all got married, did you ever kiss Henry? She said, no. But she did, didn't she? Okay. <laughs> Miss Alice? <laughs> She probably said, don't ask that question. Don't ask that question. And, uh, amen. But anyway, we won't hold that against her, will we? Some of you kissed your wife before you got married too, didn't you? But anyway, she was a sweet lady. She lived by faith. And, uh, then I think about another crossing in her life and, and, uh, uh, over in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 14, the disciples are on a, Jesus is sending them across the, the Sea of Galilee and a great storm comes up. And, uh, and as they cross over that Sea of Galilee, that crossing there, I think about this, this thing called uh, uh, the Sea of Galilee, the, the security, the crossing of security. In other words, as they cross in the Sea of Galilee and uh, the storm comes up, the wind's blowing, and they, they fear for the Lord. Matter of fact, they woke him up and said, Lord, don't you care that we perish? So Jesus gets up and walks out to the bow of the ship and says, Peace, be still, and it died right down. And so when I think about that crossing, I think of the crossing of security. The security that she found in the Lord Jesus Christ. And talking with her over, over a period of time. And she said, uh, Preacher, not only do I have security, uh, but Lord, uh, uh, the Lord has given me a peace in my heart that he's going to take care of me till the day I've died. <coughs> do you realize that when you get saved, you're saved forever? Amen. Do you realize that salvation, when you really get saved, get born again, that you're saved for eternity? You're secure in Jesus. And you can't keep yourself saved. You, if you try to keep yourself saved, you couldn't be saved five minutes. Right. I can keep myself saved. When he saves somebody, he saves them for eternity. Little simple verse, John 3, 16. Amen. You find that phrase, everlasting life. Romans 6, 23, eternal life. How long is everlasting? How long is eternal? It's forever. 
And uh, so in talking with her, just talking, I said, Miss Alice, after you got saved, what was one of the one of the best doctrines you ever heard about when you first, when you realized she was preaching, one of the things that blessed my heart so much after I got saved was when I found out I was saved forever. Amen. And she said, I never knew that because I'd been taught that you could lose it. I said, well, if God gives it to you, you sure can't lose it. Amen. God, God doesn't give you something. God doesn't give you eternal life to turn, turn around and take it back from you. So Jesus told the disciples, he said, he said uh, fear not. Fear not. He's with them. He's with you if you're saved today. And then the last crossing was just a verse I just read. Found in Psalm 23. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, in that valley, that crossing in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Well, we all start out having to get saved, amen. Amen. And with the help of God, we learn to live by faith and cross over and, and, and begin. You see, at the, at the crossing of the Jordan, sometimes we sing a song at the crossing of the Jordan. Jordan, the land, of, the land of, of milk and honey, is not a picture of heaven. It's a picture of the abundant life. It's, the, it's a picture of living by faith and trusting God for everything you need. That's what it's all about. And so she got to that point, and then she got to realize, you know, I, I, I don't have, my salvation's not in me. The salvation I have is in my God. Amen? Amen. I'm secure. I'm so safe in his hand. And so when I thought about this verse here in, in the uh, 23rd Psalm, I think about the serenity that you have because you have been saved. The serenity. Wow. I wasn't there, Henry, when she got escorted from this world to another world. And just this past uh, Saturday, my sister-in-law went from this world to another world. Serenity. Wow, think about that. How are you going to die? Well, you're going to either die one way, lost or saved, heaven bound or hell bound. I, folks, I don't hear that hell stuff. Well, it's true. And it's a, it's a real place, but I, I want to dwell with that heaven place, amen? Serenity. I do not know how I'm going to die. I do not know where I'm going to die. But I know how I'm going to die. I'm going to die at peace with God. I'm going to die with the same serenity that this lady died. Amen. We went to see her, and of course, the family saw her every day. She lay there, and up until like maybe the last day or so, she was unresponsive. She lay there. She gazed up, looked up, and Henry said that the nurse that came by said, Henry, I think she's looking up into heaven. And she could have been. I don't know. Serenity. Die, no matter how you die, where you die, when you die, you're going to get a royal escort from this world, and you're going to cross over from this, this life and to another life, a life that will be eternal in heaven at the crossing. How are you going to die? Will you see her again? You family members here? Do you plan on seeing her again? Do you plan on uh, meeting her in heaven? Well, if you're not saved, you won't. And if you are saved... Why don't you let her life be an example to you? Why don't you let her life show you somehow to live? Because she lived, she lived a good Christian life. I, she lived a perfect life. I asked her one time, I Miss Alice, I said, you seem so sweet and so kind. Are you like that all the time? She said, no, sometimes I can be mean. <laughs> wow. Great day of life. And uh, I'm not going to ask Henry that either. But to die at peace with God. Will you die at peace with God? If you're not saved, you don't have it. You don't, he's not, you don't have peace with God. But God's made it possible through the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, she's there with him right now in the presence of God. And she has, she's there. And guess what? She's there. Brother Howard's there. Now, they're not husband and wife in heaven. And neither will you be. But she's there. And she's rejoicing. She's excited. She's thrilled. 
As a matter of fact, I believe according to the Bible, they even see what's going on down here right now. I believe they observe you and I. They can't do anything about it. They observe us. I wonder what she sees and what's going on in your lives, how you how you going to carry on your life. So my thought is this here. Have you crossed over from death and darkness into life eternal? Or you, have you learned to live by faith? Or are you just trusting yourself to get through the body? Preacher Baker, I'm just going to do the best I can. Hope I get there. That's not going to do it. If you think you can do the best you can, you'll get you. It won't work because you can't do the best. God gave his best so that you don't have to do that. Except the fact that you're a sinner like she was. Except the fact that your sin separates you from a holy God. And the only way that you can get, have peace with God and die with peace with God is to call upon the Lord Jesus Christ, repent of your sin and believe upon him and then you can be saved and you'll have eternal life and you'll have that serenity that she had when it comes time for you to die. No matter how you die, that serenity will be there. It may be a sudden death or maybe a long lingering death, but the serenity will be there. When you, when you take that last, <gasps> that's it. From this world to another. And it's my prayer, you'll be saved today. I'm going to ask Miss Ruth if she would to come to the piano and play, play something very softly. And I want to give an invitation. And uh, this invitation is for you to, uh, re to recognize yourself that you need to be. Maybe God has spoke to you. I'm emphasizing the family, but all of you listen to Brother Baker. The greatest thing that could happen to this afternoon at this service in memory of her and honor of her, the greatest thing would be for somebody to be saved. They'd rejoice in heaven over that. They would really get excited. And you'd get saved. Wouldn't it be something if you got saved and, and you could say one day, I got saved at my Alice's funeral or my friend's funeral. I got saved. Amen. And you can be saved today. You need to be. If you want to be, you can be if you believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to ask us to bow our heads. And Miss Ruth is going to play something. And uh, I'm going to pray. Father in heaven, bless the invitation. Thank you for the wonderful, wonderful life that we experience knowing this dear lady. And I'm thankful, God, I know where she's at. And look forward to that reunion day when we'll meet her and all the others who are there. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you'll speak to those who are here today who are lost without Christ and need to be saved. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will nudge them. You would woo them and pale them and convict them of their sin. Give them the faith they need to believe upon Christ and help them to be saved. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed. I cannot see everybody here, but if you'd like to be saved, I'd like for you to lift your hand up and put it right back down. No one's looking but me, and I may not see it myself, but just lift it up. Just lift it up, put it right back down. Nobody's going to single you out. Nobody's going to come to you. Just want you to lift your hand up. Recognize that if you want to be saved, you can be. You can be. And if you are saved, would you leave here today more determined to be a better Christian, to learn to live by faith and convictions, walk like a Christian, live like a Christian? Would you like to do that? Would you do that? Now, Holy Spirit, I do not know if anyone raised their hand about being saved. Lord, if they did, I pray that even right now, they would ask you to forgive them of their sin and their unbelief and God that they would call upon you right now in simple childlike faith and ask you to forgive them and to come into their heart and life and save them and give them that peace and that serenity that only you can give thank you Lord Jesus for loving us and dying for us giving us eternal life help us to live like we should 
thy name I pray. Amen and amen. Sam, please. Thank you.